Assalamu alaikum. Uh, children, uh, this is Nonihal magazine, which is in Urdu as well as in English. And uh, for this, I have written um, a feature on Begum Jahara Shahnawaz. And I wanted to read it out to you. Um, I don't know how many of you know about her, uh, but let me tell you. So, in um, British India, about one mile from the famous Mughal Shalimar Gardens in Lahore, a village was built on the Grand Trunk Road and it became known as Bagban Pura. Hmm? It was there in her grandparents' house that a baby girl was born on April 7, 1896. Okay, She was named Jahan Ara, which means Queen of the Universe. She went to a school close to her house and learned her first lessons in English from her Nana, her maternal grandfather, uh, who was a Muslim social reformer. Her father, Mia Muhammad Shafi, was elected a member of the Punjab Les Legislative Assembly. He used to get a new English novel every month and after reading a good story, he uh, would relate it to his children in Urdu because they did not really, uh, you know, they were not well versed with English. Uh, Jahara got more and more interested in, Eng in the English language and soon she started to read the books herself. At the age of 15, in those days, you know, it was normal uh, for girls and boys to get married at a um, very young age. I mean, at 15, you are still a child, but you know, she was married to Mia Muhammad Shanawaz, who was a barrister and member of the Punjab and later Central Legislative Assembly. Uh, let me show you uh, Begum Jahara Shanawaz's picture. There, see that? That's her. Okay. So, um, as Jahara was keen to complete her education, she continued her studies. It was only due to the special consideration of the British principal of the Queen Mary College in, in Lahore that uh, Jahara was able to complete her education even after the birth of her first daughter in 1912. She became active in causes relating to uh, women's welfare on, and social change, including the All India Muslim Women's Conference and from 1920, the Muslim League, hmm? because that came into being. Um, and uh, um, so she, she became involved with the Muslim League. In 1921, women gained the right to be elected to the legislatures. Let, it's the legal body, you know, where laws are made. Okay, so educated Muslim women began to participate in political life. They included the Muslim League activist Begum Jahara Shahnawaz, as she was uh, come to be known by then. From 1930 to 1932, there were a series of conferences organized by the British government and Indian political personalities uh, uh, for, uh, you know, to discuss the constitutional reforms in India. They are famously known as the Round Table Conferences, okay? They were conducted as per the recommendation of Muhammad Ali Jinnah, who was later known as Qaeda Azam. Uh, or the great leader. Begum Jahara Shanawaz and Radha Bhai Subrayan were the only two, a Muslim and a Hindu, um, Indian women representing the 160 million women of India at that time. Begum Shanawaz's speech at the opening session of the conference was a huge success. She campaigned to change British misconceptions, misperceptions rather, about the backward state of women in India, saying that the so-called uh, unchanging East is unchanging no more, no longer. 
10 years ago who could have thought of indian women coming to london and taking part in such a conference today two of us are actually sitting around on um, one table to evolve a suitable constitution for our country begum shanawas died in 1979 but is remembered for her contributions throughout her life towards the muslim women of india in terms of their social and cultural uplifting okay so remember her begum jahara shanawas who first worked in india and then after 1947 in pakistan